Hey everyone, Dr. Krahe here. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to SPSS. So starting off in the lower half screen, lower uh, left part of the screen rather, you'll see two little buttons. We have a data view and a variable view. Data view, variable view. You just click to switch between these two. Data view is going to give you all of your data. It's going to show you um, all of your variables, all of your participants, so you'll be able to see every column is going to be a different variable. Every row represents a different person. So we'll come back to this in just a second. But first you have to set up your variables in variable view. So here you have different columns asking for different characteristics of this variable. Every row in variable view will represent a new variable. To add a new one, just make up a name. So here uh, I'll just put score. So maybe we're talking about some kind of final exam score. Type, it will be numeric. We'll put numbers in there. You could change the width, you can change the decimals, put decimals to zero, you can put a label. So this is what will show up in your output. So I'm going to put final exam score there. Values, we don't need this because score will be a continuous variable so we can just skip it and skip everything else. Let's have one more variable, I'm going to call it class status. Now you cannot have any spaces. Uh, in your variable names in SPSS, so I put an underscore there, so class underscore status to represent are you a junior, senior, you know, so on and so forth. Still numeric, zero decimals again, this is discrete data, you're either um, a freshman or a sophomore or a junior or a senior, you're not anywhere in between, these are distinct categories, this is discrete uh, data, so a discrete variable. Um, class status, we can make that the label, and we can put spaces here, so I don't have to put the underscore. What we really want to see here is this value. So if you go over here, you see this little box. You can click on that, and you can define what numbers you're using to represent what, uh, what categories. So here, perhaps for one, uh, that's my freshman freshman represented by one, maybe two represents my sophomore, so you put value two, label sophomore, and then click on add. Three, I've got some juniors, maybe four represents seniors, hit add, and then click OK. So when we start to look at, you know, how many people of different kinds do we have in this data set, it's not going to show us we have 14 ones, it's going to say you have 14 freshmen. So we've set up two variables here, so we can go back to data. So we have one variable of score in the first column, one variable of class status in that second column. Every row uh, represents a different individual that has participated in your survey, so we need to enter some data here. I'm just going to uh, make some up real quick. So this is a percentage uh, percentage on a final final score 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 100 we've got a bunch of people that did very well there class status again just going to cycle through this 1 2 3 4 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 and 4 so now we have a full data set we have two variables we have a score variable so a final score and then we have class status, so what class standing are you? Are you a junior, are you a senior, so on and so forth. Every row represents an individual person. So the first person in our data set scored 100 on that final exam, and they are a freshman. Person two scored a 90, they're a sophomore. Person three scored an 80, they're a junior. Uh, person four scored a 70, and they are a senior. Now, oftentimes we're going to have a data set with 100, 200, 300 people, and we need to very quickly look and say, uh, what kinds of people do I have in this data set? Um, do I have mostly seniors? Do I have mostly juniors? What's going on here? We can get that information very, very quickly with SPSS. One way to do that, analyze, descriptive statistics, and then go to frequencies. Now I'm going to move class status over to my variables because I want to know more about class status. Under statistics, this is a discrete variable, so it doesn't make sense to get your mean, your median, but it would make sense to get your mode. What's our most frequent category here? 
Under charts we have a couple of options. We can get a bar chart, pie chart. Those are most appropriate for discrete data. So we're going to do bar chart. Hit continue and hit OK to run this. Now we'll get a summary box telling us we had 20 people in our data set. Our mode was 1. Our most frequent category was 1. Oh, actually it's giving us a little uh, a little star there saying multiple modes exist. The smallest value is shown. If you look down, we have equal people in each group. There are five freshmen, five sophomore, five junior, and five seniors. So we actually don't have a mode here. There are more than three modes, so we do not have a mode. Everything is equal. At this point, mode is not useful to give us a sense of the data, so we can't use it. Under uh, This is our bar chart, so again in a bar chart, these uh, on this x-axis, they do not touch because they are categories, they are distinct categories. You're a freshman, you're a sophomore, a junior, or a senior, you can't be anything in between these ranks. So our bar chart tells us very, very clearly we have five people across all of our categories. We could do the same thing, analyze, descriptive statistics, frequencies, go back to charts. We could change this to a pie chart, hit continue, OK. And now we get a pie chart showing us the exact same thing. So we have equal numbers of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and we can see that very clearly in this pie chart. Another uh, visual tool that I use quite a bit in, in statistics is a um, a box and whisker plot. So go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. Dependent list here with uh, box and whisker, we really want a continuous variable. So here we're going to move final exam score over. Under Statistics, we can get descriptives. We'll get mean, median, mode. We'll talk about those very, very soon. You can get different plots. You can get stem and leaf. You can get histogram, so on and so forth. We'll hit Continue. You can choose to display both statistics and plots, which we'll do here. You could get only the statistics, only the numbers, or you can get only the pictures, only the plots. We'll choose both because that's more informative, and click OK to run. Here's our summary box showing us we have 20 people in this data set. Going down, we can see our mean final exam score, 68. Our median, 70. Uh, we have variance, standard deviation. Those topics are coming up in the course very, very soon. We'll, we'll learn what those mean. We have skew, kurtosis, negative 0.26, kurtosis, negative 1.29. So we do not have any, uh, you know, problems from skewer kurtosis. We have a pretty normal uh, spread of data here. We can see that more clearly in this histogram. So again, continuous data, the bars will touch. It can fall any number here. It could be 20, 21, 22, 23 and a half, so on and so forth. So they do touch. This is just a visual depiction of how, f how common each score was. So you can look at this pretty clearly and see, oh look, our mode is 100. And it should say that up here if I checked it. We didn't actually get it, but our mode is 100. A lot of people got a perfect score on this final exam. If we scroll down, here is our stem and leaf plot. So we have uh, some different numbers there. You can see, uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Stem and leaf plots are good and they can be useful. Honestly, I don't use them a lot. I know some people that do. I prefer this guy right here, the stem, uh, this box and whisker plot, excuse me. So you know within the box, most of your data falls within this range. Your whiskers spout off to the top and to the bottom, showing you a sense of the variability or the spread of that data. Now if we had an outlier on here, if one score was distinctly different from the others, it would show up. It would be way up here, there would be a little asterisk. Way down here, there would be a little asterisk. So you could see, okay, one of these people is not like the others, in which case you have to make a decision. Should I include them in the data? Should I kick them out of the data? And then of course you would have to include your rationale in your write-up. So we can uh, look at discrete data, we can look at um, bar charts, pie charts, we can look at continuous data using box and whisker charts, we can use histograms, all of those are, are very useful to get a sense of our data 
as a whole. Do we have any outliers? Do we have normality issues? Again, we'll talk about normality in a few weeks, um, but remember that these can assess that issue of normality. So do we have outliers? Do we have um, normality issues? What's the overall sense of our data? Do we have a good sample? Uh, do we have a good number of freshmen, of sophomore, junior, seniors? Do we have a good number of um, our different race and ethnicity groups? Those kinds of things. So um, that's it for now. We'll mess with SPSS just about every single week in this course. So again, if you do need help, please reach out. I'm available. Email, Skype, phone call, you know, all those things. If you need help, let me know. We'll get you caught up.